Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConnor Man at YouTube with a, another model video around 3D printing. I have discovered a resin manufacturer for SLA DLP 3D printing, Monocure 3D. And it's manufactured in Australia, making shipping and sourcing a lot easier than the stuff I've been getting from Asia which uh, the good colours are sold out and having trouble with uh, certain colours in a low wattage 3D printer, the Spark Maker. I found the website to be very user friendly and explained what was the ideal resin for the ideal printer. They do have stockists around the world. And here is the sample pack, well packaged, no leaking. This is the 3D Rapid Line specially designed for things like the Anycubic and Spark Maker. The bottles are black as to not let the resin go off if you were silly enough to leave it in direct sunlight. Plenty of warnings about shaking before use and everything you need to know regarding uh, safety. Gen Don't know why the lids are different. We will start with the white resin first and give it a good shake for about 10 to 20 seconds onto a fresh bed we're only going to fill to the halfway point line first layer it's a bit hard to see because it's white neither of the corners is actually taking my knife or even coming close to lifting the first print has failed but I was experimenting with 45 to 30 degrees to fit more on the bed as well as prints not falling off the supports. Mind you, the resin has stuck to the bed very well with this much weight where the orange resin did not. Another weird feature, and we will see with the second white print, is a lot of material is wasted. The bed has been adjusted, but we've got all this overcured resin and more wasted resin in the tank. And we finally have a decent print. It has taken a few goes, but we've finally got a printed model under different settings. The resin is completely different to anything else, and uh, to the credit of Monocure, I've actually contacted their number, which you can also do via social media for those overseas. And having a chat about the settings machine I used, I was well overexposing it and another point underexposing it. And through customer service, they've assisted me in getting an ideal print and further tests where I have to use a much thicker support compared to the other resins to make the model not fall into the vat. So here are the list of failed prints and the settings. First I've done a mix of the Monocure as well as the previous resin I've had and even though it is a pretty good tight print for some reason there was quite a bit of overcured sludge at the bottom and it's taken a whole chunk while solid out of the side of it. It can be filled with uh, putty but it's absolutely not ideal and uh, this is due to the failed print. This goes for about 15 to 20 seconds a layer to get it as cured as humanly possible for the finest of supports. Now the next one is this is 100% mono cure white resin and again, uh, 15 to 20 seconds, but it overcured to the point where there was a large blob I had to peel off and it's lost all detail, including large flash of uh, resin in extra fat areas, losing all definition and detail. A complete failed print and not really useful for anything, even though some of the faces does have some detail learning through customer service that this can only take a handful of seconds to cure I winded it all about way back to three four seconds and all I've got was a layer to stick to the bed for about 60 seconds and then everything else sandwiched on the uh, 
tank and made uh, whatever this was. Unfortunately I ran out of white resin as I used a lot of it as a primer for uh, the bad resin and I had to mix a bit of clear resin to make this final print which is uh, a tank and it's absolutely perfect at the factory settings of uh, 10 seconds a layer and 60 seconds for the base layer. So this product is actually very well made to the standard factory specifications of the 3D printer itself. They're actually, all of this tinkering I did was completely unnecessary, but it's good to see the examples of when you use way too much UV and it overcures, and when there's not enough and it drops back into the bed. Another thing I've noticed is it doesn't like the finest supports on the spark maker and some of it uh, just doesn't quite connect properly. The medium ones it does absolutely spot on and beautifully. Besides that the detail is pretty crisp and nice. This is also a hollow model so I'm going to remove the supports, drill the bottom and pour the remaining resin inside of it out to be recycled. A traditional full solid model at 50 grams with supports, so add uh, 4 or 5 grams. Opposed to this is only 32 with supports about 37. The model is absolutely hollow with about 2.5 uh, mill of material and I could probably afford to make it a lot thinner because that is pretty damn solid. It's great to save money on resin. I use that mesh mixer by Autodesk which is free to download and the hollow command export to STL. Simple as that. We have to cut the white with clear but the form is absolutely awesome give it a bit of a bath. First wash and a wipe down. I find the wipe down is important. You can see quite a bit of detail. Now we're going to attempt clear. I'm pretty fearful as it's not translucent over curing might be a bigger problem or we might encounter something a bit different from just the use of the white. We're going to be using the same model of the two nude girls. Fortunately this failed and um, purely because the supports did not appear. The second evidence that the really thin supports just do not work for rapid. It's struggling to stick to the surface of the first two layers and it overexposes at the same time. First, you do have to be very careful that when you have a dodgy print there's all this loose waste resin at the bottom and if you do another uh, print it will be destined to be a failed print. The danger with the clear resin is when the vat's full and you've got some cured resin or debris at the bottom you can't see it because it's all crystal clear. Unfortunately the figures have warped to the point where they're absolutely unusable but cleaning it up there is a nice amount of uh, facial and clothing detail on this one so it definitely captures and I think if I play around with the settings enough I'll definitely get it working. The tank warped a little bit but it actually came out absolutely ideal being a hollow and uh, lighter mechanically it is pretty sound again. Unlike the figure, this has over a hundred supports, a lot of them very sturdy and once you wash it in methylated spirits, uh, for everywhere else in the world, isopropic alcohol and water, it has a tendency of fogging up a bit. You can use a special mix of chemicals to keep it uh, crystal clear as if it just came out of the vat, but Frosting up is good as you can finally see the details and even though some of the supports did not survive this print is a total success. The clear resin does work but is more troublesome than the white. After 13 seconds we finally have the perfect print with no fault. There was a little overexposure in a layer of material on top but uh, I suppose that's just the drawback of this material. Almost a dollar in wasted resin, not happy at all.
Big Grey, the most widely used product of them all. Fill up the tank again and go back to the figure test. And while we're at it, we may as well film the tank as well. There is a bit of overcured, uh, so thin that it's easy to snap off, and a bit more in the actual tank of the 3D printer. But the print in grey is a complete success and will go through a wash. I have a thinking or a sinking feeling that this resin does not like solid models or projecting a lot of UV. And we'll do one more attempt with uh, the model being as hollow as humanly possible. Only one layer has stuck up. But besides that and a little bit of overexposure, it's practically a perfect print. We're going to go for thinner walls and more supports at a lower or less exposure rate. What's important to consider before you make a conclusion from my conclusion is I'm still new and experimenting with reactive resin and the only way to work around reactive resin for the perfect result is to keep testing and keep having failed prints until you find that sweet zone of good supports, great detail and orientation with as little interruptions as humanly possible and at the moment I'm having more trouble finding that spot with this resin opposed to other import resin not saying it's a bad product it's harder for me to use I've made a lot of complaining throughout the video in the end what's been laid out to me all resin manufacturers are different with the amount of uh, component that reacts to UV light and hardens as well as every color and type of resin within brands require a different set of settings so the 3D Rapid is a lot different than anything I've experimented or played with and 13 seconds with the fattest supports is ideal for this product but Everything else I've uh, used required less time, more time, much bigger range of flexibility before over curing or not printing at all, and much thinner supports. In the end, in larger quantity local, MonoCure is the cheapest, and for now it's what I'm going to use until I can source uh, other resins and make very fine models. I've successfully been able to make something out of white, grey and clear. Clear has frosted up but with the correct solvents can remain uh, opaque and with two models that we've seen in the video that failed missing legs and massive stepping lines I have decided to paint just to see where the faults are and what detail we can pick up with uh, organic models, faces, hair, clothing that sort of thing and to my surprise with a one hour painting session it has popped very nicely now unfortunately because of big supports the back is very lumpy and lacks definition however if I was to apply primer and sand it and putty it over a few sessions it would pop absolutely perfectly meaning these six figures would look even far smoother and superior than these guys. And having a very close look, we can see uh, on the right breast there's a bit of pancakeage and there's a few support lines where I've stopped the printer and adjusted things, moving the model and not realigning properly. And other parts where it's been weak on supports, uh, this was on medium supports, and the model swung around as it printed thus a lot of the bad lines now going to the mechanical side of things printed at an angle each of these tanks even though the bottom are very rough due to fat supports the top of it has all the right detail and definition required for a good paint job and you can see the bottom is problematic uh, primer sand it multiple times 
and that should not be an issue as well. All in all, the product works. I have uh, sampled and tried to use the usual stuff. It does not work. I find that mixing it with the Rapid cuts back a lot of uh, overcuring. But in the end, this review is only utilizing the Spark Maker and not other 3D printers. Uh, this is probably the more difficult printer to use. So maybe the combination is not ideal and uh, save this resin for a more proper and expensive 3D printer. All in all, very happy with uh, the finished results here with the supports removed. You would not think that there were such difficulty printing them and that these models are not too bad at all. But uh, that is sharing everything. Thank you very much for watching as always. Until next time, stay tuned for further content. I'm still new to SLA 3D printing. I'll keep experimenting and we'll see where this takes me. See you guys later.